Welcome to everyone worshiping with Zion United Church of Christ this morning. I am Pastor Sarah, and a big welcome to all of you, both those who are in person and for folks who are joining us online. We are grateful that you are here. And for folks joining us online, do give us a like or a comment so that we know you're worshiping with us and so that we can say hi to you. Looking at what we have coming up this week, Today, in worship, we are going to celebrate the awesome staff we have here at Zion. October is Pastor and Church Staff Appreciation Month, and so we want to show our gratitude uh, for those folks who help make our ministry happen. Um, so we will celebrate them today in worship, and then everyone is invited to join us afterwards over at the Fellowship Hall for lunch. We've got four different kinds of chili, cornbread, cookies, all kinds of delicious things for you. And as we gear up for this fall season, it's like the perfect time for chili. So we hope that you can join us after worship for lunch. And then today at 3 p.m., we have a special worship service. It is our pet memorial service. So we have, I think, an enriching grief ministry here at Zion, and the loss of a pet is a kind of grief um, that I think is important to acknowledge. So today at 3, we'll be back here in the sanctuary. That service will be live streamed as well, so thank you to Nathan and Michael for helping with that. Um, and folks are invited to bring a picture of the pet or pets that you want to remember. We're going to have a little memorial table, and you can put your picture up there. I've got mine. I brought mine, so I made sure I didn't forget. I'm going to be remembering um, this lovely little kitty called River. So she wasn't mine, but she meant so much to our family, so I'll share more later today. Monday evening at 6 p.m., we do have our monthly grief group meeting. And Tuesday at 1 p.m., we have Bible study at Paula's house. We're going to finish up the book of James, and then I think the plan is that we're going to look at Ruth. Is that correct, Paula? Okay, so we're going to start exploring Ruth. I think that'll be a great study. That's such a great book um, to explore. Tuesday at 6.30, we have a council finance team meeting on Zoom, and Wednesday at 6.30 is our regular monthly council meeting, also on Zoom. And then Thursday at 11 a.m., the Golden Friends are heading to the depot. So our Golden Friends ministry is a ministry that is open to all. You do not have to be a 65 and older card-carrying AARP member to join us. If you are free on Thursday, you are welcome to be part of this ministry. It would be helpful if I could get a show of hands, though. If anyone plans on attending lunch this Thursday, I want to try to get a reservation so that we make sure we've got a table for us. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much. We will get a table reserved over at the depot. We are meeting there at 11 a.m. Uh, for a delicious meal and some wonderful fellowship. So we will see you there. Um, and then next Sunday after worship is our congregational meeting. So we hope that you can stay for that as we do this important work of the church. In the back, you will find our regular budget that we will vote to adopt, um, along with our narrative budget that tells the story of our ministry and how your generous dollars are used to do God's work and to fulfill the mission that God has given to us. So take a look at both of those. And we will also be voting on council members. So every year, three positions come up. So we are looking for three folks to help fill those positions on our council. Um, so do prayerfully consider whether or not God is calling you to be Michelle Van Dyke's running mate. Because she needs a vice president. So do consider whether or not God is calling you to serve. Um, and I think you saw last week with Michelle's presentation, we do have a good time on council, even as this is some important and serious work that we are called to do. 
Um, I have just a couple more announcements to lift up. The young adult group is heading to the Ho Irvington Halloween Festival on Saturday, October 26th. We're going to meet at 10 a.m. at the Irvington Starbucks. We like to get an early start before it gets so crowded that you can't even move. So we will be there approximately 10 to 12. So young adults, if you plan on attending, do let me know. And other folks, if you want to join us too, you are welcome. It is a fun time. And then in November, we are kicking off 30 days of prayer for Zion UCC. Uh, we will have prayer calendars available for you every single day. We are going to pray for a different aspect of our ministry here at Zion. Um, and we're also going to have a half-day prayer retreat on Saturday, November 2nd. That's the first Saturday of November from 9.30 to 12. Um, so you are welcome to join the Faith Formation team for that retreat. Those are the announcements that I have. We will um, begin our worship now. Martha's going to help ready our hearts with our prelude meditation. Today for our call to worship, we do have a call and response to do. So when I point to you, you will say, we want to follow Jesus anywhere he leads. We want to follow Jesus anywhere he leads. We gather to listen to the voice of Jesus say, come, follow me. But will you follow when Jesus also calls you? to release the hold that wealth has on you. We want to follow Jesus anywhere he leads. We gather to remember all that God has taught us through scripture, tradition, reason, and experience, but what about when we have to put what we know into action? We want to follow Jesus anywhere he leads. We gather to live into God's economy of abundance, recognizing the riches of the prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness that surround us. But what about when the world tempts us back into scarcity? 
We want to follow Jesus anywhere he leads. We gather to shine as a beacon of a new way of living, where following Jesus means sharing God's abundant gifts together. But will you keep shining when others try to pull you astray, putting the pursuit of wealth before the pursuit of God? We want to follow Jesus anywhere he leads. You are invited to comfortably stand if you are able and so called as we sing hymn number 109, Oh, How I Love Jesus, a reminder of our desire to follow Jesus whom we love, number 109, Oh, How I Love Jesus. Resources, our very lives. We are easily drawn away from serving you by the enticements of the world for wealth and ease and comfort. Just like the young rich man who came to Jesus in the scriptures, we are owned at times by our possessions, held captive by our treasures. We put other things before you. You continue to offer to us healing and hope. You seek to transform our lives from captivity to freedom in witness and in service. We look at the world in which there is so much warfare and strife, anger and hatred, and we easily become overwhelmed by the needs and the stresses. God, help us to place our lives and our trust in you knowing that with your help, many wonderful things can be accomplished, which will provide hope and peace for others and ourselves. God, give us courage and strength to truly be your disciples. Give us courage and strength to serve and enrich the community around us. God, give us courage and strength to be your church and to care for one another. God, in these moments especially, we lift up to you those prayers we named a few moments ago. For folks in our lives and in our congregation who are facing hard things, who are undergoing treatment, who know aches and pain in body and spirit, who know in these moments tremendous loss and grief, who are seeking to rebuild their lives after devastation. God, offer your encouragement, your support, your healing, and your hope. And God, as disciples, may we be instruments of all this and more in your world as we build your kingdom here on earth. 
God, we lift up to you these prayers in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'd like to invite our choir to come forward as they share for us our anthem for today, How Great Thou Art, Majesty. And we are so grateful um, today to have Martha accompanying our choir along with her dear friend, Judy Proch. It is always a gift and a blessing to be able to experience these two playing together. We are grateful for it. <clears throat>
Michelle is helping pass out those gifts, you are invited to grab that laminated card in your pew. Um, together, we are going to lift up our mission statement to remind all of us of the work that call, God has called us to do here at Zion um, as we fulfill the mission that we have been given. Oh, are you, are you too? Thank you. Um, so let's join now together in reciting our mission statement. United by Christ's loving embrace, a welcoming light in an unsure world, we serve and enrich the community and provide a safe gathering space for fellowship, spiritual growth, and self-exploration. That is the call that God has given us here at Zion United Church of Christ, and we could not do it without our incredible staff. So thank you, staff, very, very much. And I'd like now to offer a blessing. Most gracious God, we give you thanks for the staff of Zion and United Church of Christ, whom you have blessed us with. We lift each of them up to you in gratitude for the ways that they serve and enrich your church and the community around us. Each of them offers their talents and time, their dedication and their commitment, their very selves to this work. What incredible gifts to your church. We celebrate that each has answered the call on their own lives to do this ministry. We ask now for your blessings to be poured out upon them as they continue to answer that call. May your spirit be with them in their work and in their service. Amen. Thank you all so much. We do hope that you can join us after worship over in the fellowship hall as we continue celebrating and as we enjoy a delicious chili lunch provided by our council as an expression of their gratitude um, for all that our staff does here at Zion. I'd now like to invite Greg, Colin, and Mindy to come forward for our scripture reading today. It is Mark chapter 10, verses 17 through 31, and it is the story of the rich man who came to Jesus seeking eternal life. As Jesus was sitting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. And you shall not defraud. Honor your mother and father. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all of these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own and give the money to the poor. You will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away, grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard is it to enter the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age 
houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children in fields with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. Thank you to our readers for help bringing God's word to life for us today. Friends, let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for your mercy. We give you thanks for your grace. And we give you thanks for the good news that we have heard in your word today. God, sometimes you bring to us challenging things. Help open our hearts and our minds this day to the word that you are speaking, that we might help build your kingdom here on earth by being your disciples. God bless this time of study that we have together. May the words of your servant be ever faithful. Amen. So today we are talking roadblocks to the kingdom of God. Last week, we made our way back into the Gospel of Mark, and Jesus lifted up for us children as models of those who know how to receive God's kingdom. The road for them is wide open. They have this innate sense of wonder and curiosity. They have imaginations big enough and active enough to help them believe, really believe that God's kingdom can be real. They have a spirit of welcome and openness to others because they haven't yet earned the prejudices and divisions our societies teach. For the most part, kids seem to get what Jesus is about with their childlike faith and awe. In children, too, we often find a generosity that is big and bold, though that depends on the moment, I know. There have been many times when my sweet niece has not even hesitated to share her food with me, for example, her food straight out of her mouth. And um, I love her dearly, but no thank you. My nephews have shared all kinds of little gifts with me, trinkets and drawings and crafts, but of course, there are times when it can be hard to share and be generous, no matter your age. We want something, and so we put our wants over another's, whether it's our toys or books or screen time, or our resources and compassion and actual time. Sharing with others is an important value that we hold. It's a very biblical value. It's something that Jesus reminds us of often and is seen throughout the scriptures. We try to teach our little ones early on how important it is to share with others. Sharing is caring after all, we say. But sometimes we forget that that lesson applies to us too. The facts of life are that we just don't always get what we want. And sometimes there are those around us who need something we have more than we need it. As we continue on in this 10th chapter of Mark, we have a very different encounter than the one that we had last week. Here we have a wealthy man, a grown-up, who has spent his whole life trying to follow God's teachings, and yet there is still one roadblock for him on his way to the kingdom of God. It's his generosity, or lack thereof, his inability to share with others. He comes to Jesus, and not just comes to Jesus, but he kneels before him, as Colin helped us to imagine and see. And he asked Jesus with humility and longing, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus responds after this comment about how God alone is good is to list off the Ten Commandments, those core teachings that we are all to follow. This rich man can check those off with no problem. He hasn't murdered anyone or committed adultery. 
He hasn't stolen or borne a false witness. He doesn't defraud others, and he honors his parents. Check, check, check. No problem there. I've done all of this, he says. He's shown that he can follow the rules. He knows what his faith teaches, and he does his hardest to put it into practice. Surely he has inherited eternal life. Of course, he thinks, Jesus will tell me, well done, right? In this moment when the scripture says, Jesus, looking at him, loved him. Jesus sees this man kneeling before him, and Jesus' response is to love him. It is a powerful moment as this man kneels before him, longing to be told, well done, and that he has inherited eternal life. I think it's important to know that in all of the Gospel of Mark, this is the only scripture that says that Jesus loved someone. It is this rich man who has tried so earnestly to find his way to the kingdom of God, and Jesus sees him and loves him. But then Jesus says something really, really hard. You lack one thing, he warns. Go sell what you own and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. It's not what this man expected to hear, or maybe it was. Perhaps he came asking Jesus how to inherit eternal life because he knew that he had not yet found it. But hearing it spoken by Jesus was a shock for him. That's what the scripture says. He was shocked because he had many possessions, and he walked away grieving. The gospel says. I can emphasize, empathize with him. I don't fully understand it, but right now we are watching as thousands of people have lost everything that they own. I would grieve over that. They are grieving over that as folks recover from Hurricanes Helene and Milton. I'm not a rich person by society standards, but my house is full of things that I hold dearly. Sentimental things, especially, that mean so much to me, family heirlooms that are priceless and irreplaceable. I think to lose those would break my heart and leave me grieving. But to give it all up willingly, that's a hard thing to wrap your head around. Could you imagine selling every single thing in your house and your house and clearing out your bank accounts and giving it all away to the poor? It's a major roadblock for this rich man and for many. We know a thing or two about roadblocks here in Indianapolis, do we not? They are all around us, especially lately. We all know that there are those roadblocks where people discover that they can actually just go through the barriers and get straight through to where they want to go. Then there are roadblocks that lead to roads so torn up and mangled that there is no way through. Good luck driving on that torn up concrete and rebar. It's a no-go. Usually, with a roadblock, though, comes a detour, right? And you can still get to your destination, no problem. You may be a little late, and hopefully you can find those signs. But if not, your GPS should maybe redirect you in the right way. As Christians, we know that ultimately, no matter what detours we make, for us, there is one way to God. We may make some twists and turns and unexpected trips on our way there, but Jesus says in John that I am the way and the truth and the life. For this rich man to inherit eternal life, he must come and follow Jesus on the way. We never get a follow-up to what 
happened to this man. All we know is that in that moment, he was not yet ready to answer Jesus' call upon his life. It's after, the, it's after he walks away that Jesus turns to his disciples and he tells them how hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples themselves are perplexed by Jesus' words. And then we get that most famous saying that it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Some have taught that there was a gate in Jerusalem called the Eye of the Needle that camels could pass through. But scholars today pretty much know that that isn't true. It's likely a myth that started way back by church leaders in the 11th century or so, but isn't historically accurate. In one sense, they were trying to find a detour around this roadblock that Jesus had put up before them. After Jesus says this saying, our reading says the disciples are astounded. Jesus has placed before them this impossible image. Getting to the kingdom of God is as hard as, some, as a camel, a giant creature with all of these lumps and bumps passing through the eye of a tiny little needle. If you have ever sewn before, you know how hard it is to thread a needle, even with the thread that is made to go through the eye of that needle. It is the most wondrous thing when you can get the thread through the first time, but I don't know about you, it takes me two or three or four or five or six tries before that usually happens. It's not easy, even for a thread, so how on earth is a camel supposed to get through? The disciples then ask, then who can be saved? Then who can be saved? Jesus says some really hard and uncomfortable things in this reading. If what is said to this rich man applies to all the rich people of the world, then there are a whole lot of folks who will never enter the kingdom of God. If you look at things from a global perspective, that probably counts out to most of us as well. According to the World Bank, around 700 million people live on less than $2.15 a day. That's the extreme poverty line. 700 million people worldwide live in extreme poverty. From 2019 to 2022, a time span that of course encompasses the COVID-19 pandemic, those living in extreme poverty rose by 23 million people. The World Bank notes too that climate change is especially hindering poverty reduction and is a major threat going forward. They cite an increase in natural disasters, which we have seen this past week, high temperatures that reduce productivity, especially in places like Africa and Latin America that already struggle with lifting folks out of poverty. Our young adult group is actually entering into a year of study about creation care and the impact of climate change on our world and how we are called as people of faith to respond. After decades of consumerism and seeking after wealth, after generations amassing more wealth than we could ever comprehend, God's people and God's creation are hurting. So as people of faith, the question is, how can we share what we have so that the suffering of others might be eased? How can we be more generous to those God loves so that we can help bring the kingdom of God a little nearer to them? We all have roadblocks that we face on the way to the kingdom. I don't think 
that Jesus was just blanketly dismissing any and every rich person from God's realm. I don't think he was doing that at all. I don't think that it's wealth in and of itself that gets in the way, but rather our relationship with it. For others, it might be other things that you struggle with. Relating to your neighbors. Figuring out how to love those people who are different from you. Your own habits and tendencies that you put before God. In this story, we have Jesus encounter with one particular man. And he happened to be a rich man. Who put his wealth before all else. For you and me, it might not be our possessions, but another roadblock that we place between us and God. Here is the good news, though. In this reading, there is challenge, but there is also hope. After Jesus teaches all of these really big, hard, seemingly impossible things about selling everything you have and camels going through needles, after setting the bar so high for salvation that we ourselves could never reach it, when the disciples themselves are perplexed and astounded and skeptically ask, then who can be saved? Jesus offers this. For mortals... It is impossible, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. After Jesus reminds us how hard it is to get into the kingdom of God, after he points out the roadblocks that we face, he reminds us that the God we love and serve is a God who is a way. Ours is a God who clears away the rubble and debris of our hearts and lives so that we can know the fullness of life. Ours is not a God who will abandon us and make us find our own way forward. Ours is a God who journeys with us and leads us and calls us out every step of the way. Our God works wonders. And yet that still doesn't mean that a life of faith is always one that is smooth sailing. We are called to do hard things, to be generous, to share, to tend with those the world has neglected, and to extravagantly welcome and love our neighbors. That is part of what it means to follow Jesus. That is part of journeying on the way. So thank God that we don't have to do it alone or by ourselves. I guarantee that whatever the rich man decided to do or not do, Jesus' love for him remained. But just like that rich man, we have a choice. Will we follow where God leads? Thanks be to God. Amen. Our next hymn today is number 350, The Summons. It is a hymn about the call that God has placed on our lives to follow Jesus. It's number 350, The Summons. <laughs>
call upon our lives to be generous. Jesus challenged the rich man to sell what he had and give it to the poor, and he challenges us today to be generous in our giving, trusting God's provision for our lives. And so we bring our gifts to God, knowing that God can and will use them for the building of God's kingdom. We are forever grateful for the generosity of our congregation and friends and all that you offer to this ministry. It's only because of you that we can keep answering God's call. I do want to lift up a few service opportunities that we have had here at Zion. Um, one is our cram drive that we have been doing. We are still getting crayons back, so if you took some home to wrap, uh, do bring them. But so far, I didn't grab my phone. Marilyn, it's 17,000 crayons. So far, we've collected over 17,000 crayons. So thank you, everyone who has participated in that plan drive. This past Thursday, we had our blood drive here at Zion. It was our third annual Steve Thomas Memorial Blood Drive, and what a tremendous way to honor Steve's memory and to serve our community. Um, it was amazing to see the turnout that we had this time around. Folks showed up, and everyone was feeling well and healthy and was able to donate. And so we collected 28 units of blood this time, which is one of the highest collections. And that means that we potentially saved up to 84 lives through that one collection. So thank you all. Thank you um, to Becky and to Vivian for volunteering and being there yesterday. To everyone who donated and spread the word and kept this in your prayers. Together, we made a tremendous difference. And I totaled it up with all the drives we've had. So far, we've collected 156 units of blood, which has potentially saved up to 468 lives. So thank you all for your generosity. And I'd like to say a thank you also for everyone who donated to our collection last Sunday to work on hygiene kits for church world service to help them and their response to the two hurricanes that have hit recently, we collected $376.84. We also applied for a grant that the United Church of Christ was giving for churches, a matching grant. If you raised at least $250, they would give you $250. And late Friday night, we got an email that we did receive that grant. So thank you to our wider church family for their generosity. Um, so total, we should be able to put together 84 hygiene kits. So thank you. We do hope you can join us Sunday, October 20th. That's next Sunday at 9 a.m. before worship. We're going to have a little assembly line set up, and you can help us pack up those kits. It's a gallon bag, and then you'll just take one item, drop it in the bag, and we'll seal it up, and we'll get those delivered to the drop site. Friends, let us bring our gifts to God this day with gratitude and joy for all that God has done and all that God is doing and all that God will do through our ministry at Zion. If you are comfortably able and so called, you're invited to stand as we sing together our doxology. <laughs> Jesus, who leads us from greed into service. 
And so, God, we offer our very selves to you this day, that together we might build your kingdom. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 312, Christ is Alive, a reminder that the Christ we follow and serve is a living one who is with us now. Number 312, Christ is Alive. Thank you. 